Hey folks, today I wanted to just make a quick video going over this really weird build that I made uh, using the new uh, incarnation of God's Thea, uh, which revolves entirely around this particular item right here, the Necklace of Firebird, which makes it so whenever we receive a barrier, that barrier will burst once damage is received and it will deal spell fire damage equal to 80% of max life and 100% of max energy shield. So this makes it look like as though we want to scale life and energy shield as well as spell damage and fire damage in order to dish out a ton of damage. It does 0.3 second cooldown. If you get the corrosion, that reduces it to 0.2 seconds. So I did just that. Got a lot of spell damage, a lot of fire damage. Also got area damage. I believe that does increase it as well. And then I'm just focusing on that with some crit on the side, as you can see here with the Caesar's Resentment for a big crit multiplier. The crit part's the hard part. We don't have a lot of space for that in the tree, but I'll go over that in a moment. Uh, Gear-wise, we also have Fervor Gloves. Uh, the chest piece, boots, and rings are just there for extra resistance to life. I'm using a webbed arcane headscarf for life, as well as converting the half of the effects on life and max energy shield to spell damage. That helps bump it up. And using a light hunter belt to convert 20% of our life to energy shield. You can get a corrosion for that. That will convert that to a 30% conversion. Now, in order to constantly receive a barrier, we are using a pedigree of gods with kinetic conversion. This kinetic, uh, kinetic conversion, sorry, kinetic conversion makes it so you take 20% less additional damage while you're moving and also gives you a 100% chance to gain a barrier for every five meters of movement, which is an extremely tiny distance. And then this one also has some crit, which is why I started to lean into crit a little bit with this build as well. But your goal is to essentially just get a bunch of life, area, spell damage, whatever, you know, seems like it'll boost it, which is pretty much all there in the description. So we do just that with our tree. But since we're also playing Theo, we try to get tenacity charges as well, to our tenacity blessings. But yeah, we're just grabbing fire, grabbing life, fire, life, just wherever we can. Got a mite for tenacity, gets us an extra stack. You can also use burnout. And then feeling as well. Warlords, our second tree. We use rock for two more tenacity blessings, which also increases our fire damage for every stack we own. However, you can also use sweep and wildfire. Those work really well, especially wildfire. And we'll go over why wildfire is a really good pick as well in a moment. Our second major trait, we took focus strike. You can also use true flame for clear. Focus strike just works really well against bosses. And once again, just grabbing fire damage, life, energy shield, also some area damage, a little bit of crit here, and more fire damage, more life, so on and so forth, as well as the low life node here, and some radius, and you'll see we have quite a bit of radius as well. Our third tree is Steel Vanguard, which we have for Curtain, which makes it so our barrier is stronger, but we don't really use it for that. Instead, we use it for the 40% missing life and energy shield restored when losing barrier. To put that into perspective, the barrier detonation has a 0.3 second cooldown, which means they expect you to be using it very often. And you'll see all that in action, and you'll see exactly why we took Curtain. But from this tree, we just grab damage, life, and we try to get some extra mana back onto us as well. And the biggest thing here is the extra stacks for our blessings. And then once again, Pedigree of Gods, get Kinetic Conversion. That's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Skill-wise, we need to make sure that we are constantly detonating the barrier. So we need to make sure that we are constantly taking damage. The way we do that is Path of Flames as our channeling skill to move faster. Cast while channeling and Burst of Anger. Burst of Anger will constantly make us take damage. And to help refresh it while we're fighting bosses and elites, we have Thunderbolt Overload just to help proc some extra hits to refresh Burst of Anger if we're ever so lucky. And that's pretty much the biggest parts of the build. Using Path of Flames, channel it, proc Burst of Anger, Burst of Anger detonates our barrier, and then our barrier explodes, dealing damage. We keep moving, we get another barrier, and so on and so forth. The reason I picked Thea was actually just complete coincidence that it turns out this new Thea works, but hey. She has a lot of benefits for hitting enemies at full life and low life. We are set up with the Incarnation of Gods, so we're pretty much set up to do as much damage as possible when we are within our Divine Realm, and that's essentially our big burst window. But you'll see, she does extra damage to full life enemies with Agility Blessings, and she'll do more damage to low life enemies with Tenacity Blessings. These Blessings 
are going to work against each other in a sense where it's going to be very rare situations where you have both if really ever at all because of how Fia works. She converts all tenacity blessings to agility blessings when she's outside of the divine realm and she converts all agility blessings into tenacity blessings when she's within the divine realm which makes it so the divine realm is catered more so to executing low life enemies while you're doing more damage to full life enemies you know speeding through the map with your agility blessings outside of the divine realm. But there's other ways to boost your damage into the divine realm. Uh, you get born might for 24% additional damage. Um, you get ingenuity, which will convert our max tenacity blessings into our max agility blessings. Divine realm power, which gives us even more damage in the divine realm by uh, giving it for each stack consumed by the use of divine realm. And then incarnation of God for even more while we have the blessings within the divine realm. So all of that is going to give us a lot of damage within the Divine Realm for taking down bosses and elites, as well as giving us some power for mapping. So when we get into the map, simply just pop Mana Boil for damage over time, and just hold right click to start channeling. That big circle you, you see around me is the Barrier Explosion. And we just run around holding right click and it does its, it does its thing. We don't really need to press anything else. Uh, Thunderbolt Overload is proccing, just helps get some extra hits in, which is more so useful for elites and bosses. And very straightforward, very to the point build, although it has a lot of moving parts under the hood to get it up and running. The actual execution of it is very straightforward, very easy. This is a build I kind of made on a whim. I saw the item and I was, in my head, I play a lot of PoE, so in my head I was, I, I said to myself, oh, this is essentially just Righteous Fire. So I decided, hey, let's, you know, try to, try to make this work, and I haven't tried to new Thea yet, so let's use her as well, and here we are. And it's turning out to work pretty well. Now, I do think that it would benefit from potentially base version of Thea. I think she might be able to get a little bit more damage out of this. So that's something I might try in the near future, but all in all, it works out pretty well. So once the Divine Realm's up, there's all of our damage, and then the boss gets low, and then it pretty much gets executed. And bada bing, bada boom. Let's see if we get lucky here. The code will not let your efforts go in vain. Uh, we are what we call unlucky. But there we go. So that's the build in action. Uh, I will show the, the DPS against the training dummy, but it actually is going to show very low damage. It's this version of Thea is very conditional. It's about popping the divine realm and having enemies teeter between full life and low life. So you're only, you're only going to see about a million damage over time on the training dummy. Um, in terms of how to improve the build, more crit will go a very long way. Um, you're also not resistance capped. But we're very beefy. Uh, if you noticed, our energy shield was very, 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 very high the whole time. It was struggling to go down. Our life was pretty much untouched. And that's because of that 40% uh, missing life and barrier restoration. Um, we're sitting at 414 crit damage with a very low crit chance sitting at 14%. And then forever helping bump that up as well. I'll put the exact... Uh, crit chance in the description just so you can get an idea and i'll probably leave a link to the fervor crit calculator so you can see how your crit chance gets converted how uh, how fervor affects that how having lucky affects that because that can make a big difference so you don't actually have to you don't actually have to increase your crit as high as you would think um, in order to really get it up and running um, the rest of the skills are all just compliments fixate for double damage chance mana boil we can have that up permanently so that's just free spell damage Scorch, cast out on elites and bosses manually, and potion just there for comfort, as well as all of our auras. Uh, another thing for Steel Vanguard, when you hit 36 points, put your point in knowledgeable. Um, poison immunity could work as well if you manage to get a ton of erosion. Uh, that helps cover any low armor issues you might have, uh, as well as any other low resistances. That just helps bump it, essentially makes it so you can knock your resistance down by 25% and then you'd be taking the same amount of damage, but that can help out as well. In my yeah. If you have any questions, leave them in the description down below or stop by the stream. If you have any ideas to help the build out, I am more than happy to hear it. 
and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.